name is Scott Silva. I am a radiation oncologist here at the Brown Cancer Center. I specialize in gynecologic malignancies, uh, specifically in treating gynecologic cancers with uh, brachytherapy. External beam radiation is essentially a high-dose x-ray targeting the tumor. Whereas brachytherapy is internal radiation therapy, and that is delivered by uh, placing a device, an applicator, inside the patient. Um, and for women with cervix cancer, uh, there are a couple types of applicators available that we can use. Uh, there's uh, what's called a tandem and ovoid, which is a device that looks similar to this. Uh, it's basically a, a tandem in the middle, and this goes into the uterus and then we have these ovoids here and they rest up against the top part of the vagina near the cervix. About this much would be sticking out and inside there would be vaginal packing, a long strip of gauze and that really secures it in place. And then for women who unfortunately have more extensive disease we use what's called a SIAD applicator for brachytherapy and it's a device that looks something similar to this uh, where we have a central cylinder that is placed in the vagina and then around that central cylinder we have this template device and within this template we can place needles directly into where the tumor is and we can place anywhere from just a few needles to up to 20 or more needles depending on the extent of the tumor. So we use the SIAD applicator uh, for cases where there's a poor response to external radiation. So in general, the way we treat cervix cancers is first patients receive about five to six weeks of external radiation. And then after that, they get a brachytherapy boost treatment with one of these applicators. And I usually get an MRI scan toward the end of their external radiation treatment. And if they have unfortunately poor response to external radiation, then they will need a more aggressive brachytherapy treatment with the SIAD applicator. Or if let's say they have a smaller tumor but it's located more to the side, more to the pelvic side wall, then in that case I will also need to use the SIAD applicator because this allows me to place needles to the side directly into the tumor. Number one, uh, these patients uh, do need to stay supine. They can raise the head of the bed about 20 degrees. Uh, the applicator does stay in place during the whole hospital stay. Uh, a Foley catheter is in place, uh, so that we don't have to worry about uh, patients urinating uh, on the device. Now, before the patients come in, uh, we do have them do a bowel prep. Uh, I have them do an enema, and I recommend a, a light diet, a low residue diet, before uh, coming in for this procedure. Now, once they're in-house, uh, they can have a low residue diet. Uh, we do want them to be on uh, lamotil or some type of antidiarrheal medication to prevent a bowel movement, because any bowel movement on this device would soil it, and we have to remove it and unfortunately abort the procedure. Um, now, in terms of other specific nursing considerations, the patients, you know, they, they can move their, their feet and legs a little bit. Obviously, we don't want them sitting up because that can push the device out. Um, and also, we do want the patient to try to remain clean. So if they do need to be uh, um, cleaned for whatever reason, uh, you know, let's say after the procedure, they're still having some, you know, there, there is a possibility of minor bleeding. If they need to be clean, they can be log rolled and a chuck placed underneath. That is uh, perfectly fine. And the way log roll, I, you know, I just have someone hold the device in place and then, and then the others just kind of moving the patient. So the device moves with the patient. Um, and it can be done with either this or this device. So in terms of possible side effects, while they're in-house, uh, there's a possibility uh, of pain with this, but 
for all of our patients, they at least have a PCA, uh, at least for all the, the tandem and ovoids. Now for the, uh, the sciatic patients, we do give them an epidural, uh, as long as uh, there's no contraindication to an epidural. Other possible side effects include uh, nausea, because they do have to be supine uh, with minimal elevation of the head of the bed. Uh, so we, we do instruct uh, our residents to, to make sure they have orders for anti-nausea medication. Now in terms of kind of side effects after the, the treatment, what I tell my patients to expect, um, you know, they may have some soreness in the pelvic area for some time afterwards. We try to uh, discharge them with some type of pain medication. Uh, there is a possibility of vaginal spotting, and I think a lot of that has to do with just mechanical irritation from these devices uh, being placed. One thing I want to uh, reinforce, just to be very clear um, for any new nurses uh, or even pregnant nurses, is there's no radiation in this device when, it's, uh, when the patient is upstairs on the sixth floor. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I'm handling this, these devices with my bare hands. Um, the only time that there's uh, a radiation source in the patient is when we actually do the brachytherapy treatment uh, downstairs uh, in the radiation oncology clinic. Um, the, I guess the other thing I want to uh, stress is, um, I, again, I can't stress it enough, but. Uh, Raising the head of the bed, you know, no more than 20 degrees is uh, very important uh, due to the risk of this device being uh, dislodged uh, because any dislodgement of the device could mean that we have to abort and then have the patient rescheduled at another time uh, in the operating room.